<laughs> Hi, good morning, and welcome back to another edition of Discover History at the Keys History and Discovery Center. I'm curator Brad Bertelli, and today we're going to talk about Lower Matacumbi Key. Um, if you have questions, feel free to type them in, and Jill is manning the uh, all-expensive camera, so we'll, we'll, we will uh, get your, those, an those questions answered live. Otherwise, I'll get back to them later on this afternoon. Now, Lower Matacumbi uh, has a really interesting history. When you drive on it today, there's not a lot of, of resorts or hotels. There's not a, it's not a main attractant of, of, a, of the Isla Mirada area, except for, of course, Robbie's Marina, which is one of the great roadside attractions still left on the overseas highway. But Lower Matacumbi has a great old history. And speaking of old, we will start with the name. Um, originally, it was, it, in the Spanish, it was, it was called Old Matacumbi. And Matacumbi, I've talked about this before, is one of the oldest place names in all of South Florida. Uh, the, the name uh, Matacumbi first uh, shows up in the historical record in a letter written by Pedro Menendez to the King of Spain in 1573, where he's asking for permission to attack the local Indians who were, uh, uh, who he said were aggressive. Um, so, but, so, so it's 1573 when uh, Matacumbi first shows up as a place name. And today it is, uh, it's one of the few islands that has really remained one name. Many of the islands um, have, uh, have, have grown, gone through a series of, of names. Um, but, old, but Lower Matacumbi, originally Old Matacumbi, has remained relatively the same. Now, the, what was important about Lower Matacumbi in the Early, in the early days, early years, uh, was it was a prime source of fresh water. And there were five freshwater wells uh, in the kind of where the parking lot of where Robbie's Marina is today, about marker 77.5. And these, um, these five wells were considered some of the most reliable sources of fresh water in all of the Florida Keys. Now, going ahead to the Henry Perrine era, um, 1830, 18, you know, 39, 39, uh, 38, 39, 40, um, he identifies, and it's already identified before, but he has a, a really cool uh, description of a fairy grotto, which is, is, is described in one of his daughter's uh, diaries, um, as a, a, a freshwater pool 10 to 15 feet across, covered by uh, ferns or surrounded by ferns and, and tropical plants and cactus and air plants in the trees. And it is one of the, so Lower Matacumbi becomes one of the primary sources of fresh water, which is really rare in all the Florida Keys. And that is what kind of puts Lower Matacumbi on the map in terms of the historical record. Um, it was also uh, home to uh, a, a large aboriginal uh, um, uh, settlement. There was, again, where kind of where the parking lot of Robbie's is today, there was once a, a rather large Indian mound uh, refuse pile uh, there where the Indians would, you know, pile up their bones and broken pottery sherds and, and other, other things that was largely destroyed in the, in the 1950s, 1960s um, as, as the island began to get settled. Now, the first, whereas other, you know, keys in, in the Isla Mirada area specifically were settled uh, rather early on in the 1800s, uh, Lower Matacumbi didn't really um, get its first, its first permanent settler until uh, after World War II. Um, but what's kind of what it's most famous for, or one, one of the reasons it's, it's famous for in recent history is actually for two reasons. First, it was the location of the terminus of the first version of the Overseas Highway, which opened in 1928. And that was a complete road from Miami. You could drive from, from Miami all the way down through the Keys, the Upper Keys. You, you would stop at Lower Matacumbi, and you would board an automobile ferry there. And from that automobile ferry would take you down to uh, No Name Key, which is around Big Pine, the Big Pine Key area, where the ferry would go into the terminal there. The cars would disembark and then, and then travel the rest of the way down to Key West. Um, this was also the site of the World War, uh, Lower Matacumbi was also the site of two of the three work camps where the World War I uh, veterans uh, were assigned to come build uh, permanent, uh, permanent bridge structures that would help to eradicate 
the need for this automobile ferry because the, the ferry system wasn't super reliable. If there was too much wind, not enough wind, too much, or not, not enough tide, the four hour uh, ferry trip from between Lower Matacumbi and No Name Key could, could take you know, considerably, considerably longer. So when they wanted to build this, this uh, to get rid of the ferry system, there were three work camps that were set up to help build these solid, bridge, solid bridges. And there were two on Lower Matacumbi, one kind of in the area, again, of, uh, the, of, of, of um, west, the west, the west end of, of uh, Lower Matacumbi, kind of the northern end. And then um, the, again at the southern, at, at the east end of the island, uh, kind of where the, uh, um, the Boy Scout camp is today, as well as the uh, Calusa Cove Marina and the Dead Animal Bar, which, or the Safari Lounge, I apologize, which was, used to be called the, the Dead Animal Bar. Um, and those are, the re those are kind of the, the, the famous structures or, or the famous events of, of Lower Matacumbi. Um, now, at the end of World War II, there were a, a group of, 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 of investors who purchased all of Lower Matacumbi, about 918 acres, for $120,000 and they began to sell off parcels. And one of the very first parcels they sold, sold was to um, uh, Walter and Ruth Stark. Uh, they sold 17, 17 acres to them, and they became the first permanent settlers on Lower Matacumbi Key. Now, a quick, about these four investors, I recently was asked to participate in a book club up in um, Delray Del Beach. And while I was uh, talking with the lady who contacted me, Betsy Owens, I believe her last name was, she said that one of the gentlemen who invested in Lower Matacumbi Key was a Dr. Davis. And Betsy had, uh, as, as a young girl, had, um, had a horrific accident, and Dr. Davis was actually the one who helped, who helped uh, put her back together again, which was, kind of, which was a really interesting uh, little piece of tidbit that um, I hadn't realized that connection um, that he had owned, that, 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 that he was one of the owners of, of, of the island. So that was kind of a cool, uh, it was cool to be invited to uh, partic participate in a, uh, in a book club and give some information on, actually on Lower Matacumbi Key and the area during the 1935, prior to the 1935 Labor Day hurricane. Um, but that was also a, a really cool piece of, piece of information that, I, that, was, that I gleaned from that experience. Now, when the Starks moved on to, moved on to uh, Lower Matacumbi Key, one of the first things they did was build a, a home for themselves, but also a bait shop to operate from the little, the little marina there. And that bait shop today is known as the Hungry Tarpon Restaurant. And, uh, and, the, and the original home is still visible in the parking lot there of Robbie's Marina. Now the second person to, to uh, to become a, a permanent resident of the of Lower Matacumbi Key was Captain Angus Boatwright, who um, moved just built a house just uh, just south of where the uh, um, the Stark House was, and the Boatwright story is really interesting. His daughter still lives um, still lives in, in the house in that, in that area. It was, um, her father's demise was quite tragic. He uh, took he was a fishing guide and ended up taking four gentlemen from Pennsylvania out on a, on, a, uh, on, a, on a fishing charter. They were out near Quesal Bank and were um, lured or, uh, or waved down by some people stranded on a little spit of land out there. Um, and when they uh, approached, uh, these uh, stranded renegades were actually, uh, um, had, had stolen a boat from Key West and had run aground and run out of, run out of gas and were stranded and um, they ended up killing uh, Captain Boatwright uh, there on the spot. And um, so that was, kind of, that was 1960, which is one of the later, um, early, uh, in, when we talk about uh, piracy in the Florida Keys, that is one of the, the very last um, uh, documented sources. The two gentlemen who, uh, who um, were guilty of, of that, the piracy were taken to the Bahamas and became the first Americans ever hanged in the Bahamas. Great little story there. Uh, but so Upper Matacumbi, or Lower Matacumbi Key, it does have a really interesting history. We're gonna talk about more about that as the, as the weeks progress 
And um, what we do have coming up in the, for our, we have a great lecture coming up on Wednesday that we hope you join us for. It's Women on a Mission, Saving the Everglades. It's gonna be a little different presentation than what we've been doing. Uh, it's gonna be a, a panel of, 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 of three women who have, have been in, integral in, in helping to spread the message about saving the Everglades. And it's going to be not a slide presentation, um, but more of, a, uh, of, of an exchange. Jill Miranda Baker, our executive director, is gonna moderate the panel and um, really get some interesting uh, questions and answers about the state of the Everglades today. So I hope that you join us. That's this Wednesday from six to seven. You can find a link to uh, register for the event on our Facebook page or go to our website at keysdiscovery.com uh, under events. You, it's free for, our, free for our members. Another great reason to become a member here at the Keys History and Discovery Center. Not only do you get to continue to help, help us uh, continue our message and, and, and our job here at, at the Discovery Center, providing this great history and, and preserving it and passing it on to future generations, but, but you also get free access to a, a lot of great uh, lectures and other uh, other events. Uh, if you're not a member, please consider becoming one. Otherwise, it's five dollars to join to join the uh, the lecture. It, it is an online lecture, and we hope to see you there. Uh, in the meantime, we hope you have a great week and be careful out drive if you're out driving on the overseas highway because it's really packed right now. And we want you to be safe. So uh, we hope to see you Wednesday night. If not, we'll see you next Tuesday for another edition of uh, of Discover History. You guys, have a great day. Thank you. <laughs>